Good morning. My name is Evan, and in today's Perfect Scoop, you will have the privilege of hearing a sample of one of the most influential American composers and conductors of the 20th century, Leonard Bernstein. I've put together three samples of what I believe are some of his greatest compositions. Leonard Bernstein was an American conductor, composer, pianist, music educator, author, and humanitarian who was one of the most significant figures for the American culture. As the 1985 Grammy winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award, he is considered one of the most talented and successful musicians in American history. As a composer, he wrote in many styles, including symphonic and orchestral music, ballet, film and theater music, and even chamber music. He is most well known for his Broadway musical West Side Story, which is still popular today and whose film won 10 of the 11 Academy Awards it was nominated for. Other notable works include the musicals On the Town and Candide, performances of the Mahler symphonies, and three symphonies of his own creation. During his career, Bernstein had over 60 Grammy nominations, created two international music festivals, and was the first American-born conductor to lead an American orchestra. He was well known for his advocacy for civil rights, fundraising for HIV and AIDS research, and promoting initiatives and in helping to solve world hunger. He was born on August 25th, 1918 in Lawrence, Massachusetts to Ukrainian Jewish parents, Jenny and Samuel Joseph Bernstein, who immigrated to the United States. While his grandmother insisted that his first name be Lewis, his parents always called him Leonard and friends and many others knew him by Lenny. He died on October 14th, 1990 in New York, leaving a legacy that would influence the next generation of young musicians. At age 10, he began teaching himself piano and music theory and soon took lessons from various piano teachers. He would put on shows with the neighborhood kids and often play entire operas or Beethoven symphonies with his younger sister. Bernstein attended Boston Latin School and went on to study music theory at Harvard University where he took courses with Walter Piston, another famous composer. He also attended the Curtis Institute of Music in Philadelphia where he studied conducting and orchestration as well as studying conducting at the Berkshire Music Center in Massachusetts. In 1943, Bernstein was appointed assistant conductor of the New York Philharmonic Orchestra, and the first signal of his forthcoming success came on November 14, 1943, when he was summoned unexpectedly to substitute for the conductor Bruno Walter at a performance at Carnegie Hall. This performance was the one to kickstart his career, and as a result, he went on to conduct the New York City Center Orchestra from 1945 to 1947, after releasing his first symphony composition in 1943. In 1947, he had his first international conducting opportunity with the Palestine Philharmonic Orchestra. And he also composed and performed the 1965 famous Chichester Psalms composition and Caddish Symphony, which you will hear in a few minutes. Bernstein conducted for various international orchestras during the 1960s, including the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra and the London Symphony Orchestra. And during the 1960s, he was the conductor and musical director of the New York Philharmonic Orchestra and made several international tours in Latin America, Europe, the Soviet Union, and Japan. He also explained classical music to young listeners on television shows such as Omnibus and the Young People's Concerts. The first sample you will hear today is from one of those Young People's Concerts, a series broadcasted on CBS during the 60s for which he won an Emmy Award. This particular performance was recorded in October 1960 and I chose this because the television performances had a large influence on his reputation and success. You should listen for the quick echoed melody, dialogue between the orchestral sections, and the attention grabbing hooks attributed to his style. Well, the show is temporarily over, but the overture lingers on, I hope. And I also hope it will give you an idea of some of the fun and frolic that was in that show. Here's the overture to Candide.
as you can see towards the end, his style of conducting was full of energy and flamboyance, which is what he also became known for. And while his Candide show did not have very long success, his career certainly would. The next sample I have for you today is from his symphony number no. three, Kaddish. Bernstein dedicated this work's premiere to the beloved memory of John F. Kennedy, and in this performance, the female speaker is his wife. To the people of Jewish faith, the word Kaddish, or sanctification, has a highly emotional connotation, for it is the name of the prayer chanted for the dead at the graveside on memorial occasions, and in fact, at all synagogue services. He struggled with the conflicts of the text and the music, which turns aggressive and dissonant in some parts, but harmonious in others. In Symphony No. 3, Leonard Bernstein interweaves the text of the Jewish prayer with his original text, challenging God's disinterest in the face of human suffering. The choice of a woman as the speaker and as vocal soloist, singing sacred words traditionally reserved for men in the synagogue, was an intentional choice. But because he was not satisfied with the original 1963 version, he made some revisions in 1977. The segment you will hear today is performed by the New York Philharmonic Orchestra and conducted by Bernstein himself. The sample is Kaddish one of the original symphony, and you should listen for the religious tropes, dramatic and extreme motifs, and the way that he utilizes the dualities between the composition and the vocals to build suspense. on high, who manipulate clumsy galaxies, you who juggle a space full of suns, bend light, spin moons, surely you can handily supply a touch of order here below, on this one day's speck. And let us say again, Last sample I have for you today is from Bernstein's composition, The Divic Variations, for a ballet based on S. Pinsky's play, The Divic. In Jewish folklore, a Divic is a wandering soul which enters into a living person and talks through his mouth, presenting a separate and alien personality. The story of this play is about two young lovers secretly pledged to each other before birth by the oath of their fathers. The pledge is broken by the girl's father, who marries her to another, so the boy successfully becomes a divic, which enters the body of his beloved. I chose this piece because it is one of the few ballets that Bernstein composed, but a great example of his utilization of both high and low musical styles and dramatic interjections. While Bernstein did perform this on occasion, this performance is by the National Symphony and directed by Andrew Mongolia.
You should listen for his motivic repetitions, dramatic interjections, and the building of suspense to dramatic resolutions and individual variations. I hope you enjoyed my introduction of one of the most influential and prodigious American musical figures, and that it encouraged you to check out more of Bernstein's works. His style created a new classical influence for all young musicians to pull from and touched the hearts and ears of many during his career. Tune in next week for our in-person interview with Olivia Rodrigo on her debut album, Sour.